Shalom everyone. Hope you're doing well. And um, this is Monique with the Trinity of Love Ministries. Um, this is a prophetic teaching really, or in a word. Um, it shouldn't be too long. I'm being a little quiet because I'm actually in an Airbnb. I'm traveling um, to do something for the Lord or I have to share this testimony later, but um, yeah, so that's why I'm in a different location. But he wanted me to release this word to you guys. He downloaded it to me early, early this morning, but I hadn't had time to do it. So technically, I got this word on the 22nd, but it's being released on the 23rd for you all. But um, I'm going to just pray and we'll jump in. Um, and the, the music I'm playing in the background, I know some of you commented on that. But um, specifically, he'll have me play, not all the time, and it's a it's song by the Upper Room called Design. Um, but he just showed me, he just you know made the connection, why? Because of what I'm about to speak to you. And the song is called Design, right? And time is his design, right? And so as you can see, this word is called time can be your greatest asset or your greatest defeat. Time can be your greatest asset or your greatest defeat. So I'm going to pray and uh, we'll jump right in. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your peace, your mercy, your justice. We thank you for clarity. We thank you that you are healing broken hearts, broken wounds in this hour. That you are mending every part of our soul our, our our mind our will our emotions our bodies as we come into full alignment to what it means to make you to make our bodies a living sacrifice to be the temple that you dwell in and we thank you for your restoring power your restoration what you did on the cross through your beautiful son our Lord and Savior. We thank you for the power to rise up in every situation in our lives and to be the overcomers you have deemed us to be. As it is in heaven, so it is on earth. And we thank you for the legion of angels that you have sent before us. For you said that uh, the, the steps of a righteous man or woman are, are ordered. And so we come into alignment with that, with word and deed with word and deed we just thank you that you are our alpha and our omega that you are the author and the finisher of our faith and that no weapon formed against us shall prosper because you've already designed everything that has taken place in our lives you stand outside of time and we just come into agreement we just sit at your feet to receive and to worship you to love on you to listen and to just do what you've called us to do day by day, step by step. And to let go of fear and worry in this hour. For we know what is written in the book must and shall come to pass. No matter if it's seated in the book of Revelations or no matter if it's seated in the book of Genesis. But that you have covered your people. You are waking up your people even now. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That we will not look to the left or to the right, but stay steadfast on you. In Jesus' name we pray, Yeshua HaMashiach. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys. So, time can be your greatest asset or your greatest defeat. And um, it's kind of a blend. You know, he just very quickly download, downloaded this to me. Um and it's so it's it's a blend so and he gave me a couple of scriptures they're all from ecclesiastes which is fitting right ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1 chapter 11 verse 1 it says cast your bread upon the waters for after many days you will find it again you will find it again you will find it again Whatever you have lost, you will find it again. Not by your own strength, for we do not do anything, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. You will find it again. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5, 5 to 6. Yes, chapter uh, 11, verse 5 to 6. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Sow your seed in the morning and at evening let your hands let your hands not let not your hands be idle, right? So be doing the Lord's work, whatever that looks like that He's called you to. For you do not know which will succeed, whether it is this or that, or whether both will do equally well, right? And for some of you, he's called you to do multiple things, several things. And so he's saying, put your hand to whatever he's called you to do. Even if, you know, we, we make the excuses sometimes or we worry or we doubt. And he's saying, put your hands to them because I have, I will accelerate whatever you put your hands to, right? And if for some of you, there's multiple things. Ecclesiastes verse tw chapter 12, chapter 12, verse 1, and then verse 14. Verse 1 and then verse 14. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in, him, in them. And then 14. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil, whether, whether it's good or evil, for he is our great judge, right? He is the author and finisher of everything. So I'm going to go into the word uh, I had it written down, and then he wanted me to close with the, another scripture in Ecclesiastes. So it says, as believers or as followers of Christ now, we have no defeat, no defeat, because he lives in us and through us. He also lives outside of time. You know, a lot of you know this. Outside of time, therefore, any time at his choosing, he can shift time, bend time, slow down or speed up time places restrictions or pressure on something or someone or it can become a motivation to move to let go of fear and procrastination the enemy is the only one that time is near right that his time has come the destruction of time right the ticking down of time which we know i did one word on time only in june so far i think or may um so if some of you seen that if not you can go back and watch that specifically on time but the destruction of time is a trap a setup for him not for us for the enemy not for us we are eternal beings bought at a price bought at a price in, nat in the natural, many people allow time to restrain them. So, for example, um, you feel pressure from, you know, a task you have to do at work, from a boss or schoolwork. You know, so what do you do? Some, you ask for an extension, right? Or, yeah, you ask for more time. So asking for an extension, you know, for instance, even for like a bill or something or a class assignment again or a project. So God's saying, how much more, how much more just like that can God and does he add time, add time to your personal time clock, your personal time clock, your personal life? He, God, our father, he's the one that changes times and seasons. We know that scripture tells us that the enemy will do that too because he's a copycat and a mimic. Right, but that our Father is in control of everything, and He also, He has the ultimate control, right, of times and seasons. If you notice, all throughout the Bible, God is not, He's not in a hurry, right? He's not in a frantic state, right? Only people are, or the enemy, or you know, the enemy makes or tries to make people feel that way. 
for instance, right, we know that Jesus was, um, he was always calm and collected, right? And like when he was uh, with the disciples in the boat, with the disciples in the boat during the storm, right? We know that, um, that in the book of Matthew, you know, it's in, in several of the epistles, but the famous um, story of the, the Lord in the boat, right? And he was sleeping. He was just like, what? And they were frantic and afraid. And the Lord, you know, just said one word and it quieted everything, right? One word. So nothing shocks, nothing shook Jesus. Nothing shook him. He didn't allow time or the circumstance of when it was going to work out or if it was going to work out to let him lose his peace, his calm, or his power. That was his key, right? His never losing his peace, his calm, or his power, and therefore not losing his power. Because the enemy wants you to react in your emotions and in your feelings. It doesn't mean you deny them. But that's the only place the enemy can come. Through your mind, through your emotions, to tempt you, to test you, to um, pull at you. And that's why God allows us to go through these trials so that we don't succumb to that. So that when, the what does it say, right? We shouldn't be tossed to and fro, right? We shouldn't have the double-mindedness, right? And so this is why the Lord will allow trials and testing to come um, because it, it's rooting out of us that flesh reaction right the emotional reaction so god he knew right he knew jesus knew and that he had this power and he had control he had self-control he also has control over time everything in nature is set and sinks to time even a tornado has an end time, a set time to dissipate or cease to be, right? It can no longer, it cannot go longer than it's supposed to, right? Without the materials or excess garbage that a tornado needs to build it up, right? To gather and to whirl, to speed it up um, and, and to gather more power, right? And it's the same thing with the enemy. It's the same thing with the enemy. He only works off of your ability to feed into fear and to not see the bigger picture knowing that this too shall pass, that this too shall pass. Because there is a set time to overcome everything. There is a set time, literal set time, to overcome everything. The Lord has already ordained a time to rule and to reign, and that time is that time to rule is now, is right now, right now. You've, you've heard this a lot, but He's saying now, even in the midst of what you see, because I've never said this on a video, but I say it in person to people for years now since the Lord showed me a, a lot in 2011 and from then, like. Everything's going to happen simultaneously, the good, the bad, as we, the good and the bad. And it's like the light will over, the goodness will overtake the darkness. But we have to stand up. We have to rise up. We have to get into formation. We have to get into our positions. Okay. I'm not talking about the worldly formation. I'm talking about the Lord's formation. Okay. Get into alignment. and But understanding though, it's on his time frame, right? So not to be frantic, but just to be seated and rooted in him, then you to know you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. But to, to listen, to pay attention to the spirit and to understand this is the biggest thing. The enemy doesn't want you to realize that you actually do hear from the Lord, that you don't need to run to a prophet or uh, any for every five seconds, that you hear from him, that you can sit down in the word. You can, you know, listen that you see him in nature, that you see him in these things, but you don't worship these things, right? We know the Lord speaks to you through some folks like he, I, myself. I'm a seer, like through numbers or nature or signs or whatever, but you don't worship those things, right? That's new age. That's demonic. None of those things. If you're doing that, you need to repent. And, you know, those are all things, created things. They're not the creator. So God just uses them to help us, right? To speak to us. He's a creative God, right? He 
we'll use multiple ways but ultimately if you want to be sure it's you can go in the word and he will show you in his word what he's saying to you but so he doesn't want you to be frantic about time either right so that because there's a set time there's a set time for everything the Lord has already ordained a time to rule and reign. And so either you let time be your greatest asset or your greatest defeat. But our Father has set before you an open door to first choose in your mind who will you believe and who is stronger inside you, the power of the Lord or the voice of the enemy telling you that it's over or to give up when you are truly we are truly right at the door and for a lot of you you've been you know a little bit back and forth but some of you are coming into it now especially within this last couple of days and seeing things are being clear becoming clear but we are right at the door so don't listen to the voice of the enemy listen to the power inside of you that's the spirit of the lord saying move forward this is it we are this is not a time to go back I've said it before right he is the only one God our father right the, is the only one that that stands outside of time right but the enemy is the only one that time defeats the enemy is the only one that time defeats not us not us right he his time clock the enemy's time clock is the one that is running out right so when you see him raging and warring in the world and through people, through the natural, you know, and the, the conjured and created fake, but they do create, unfortunately, real damage. Uh, when you see these weather, pa weather patterns, everything that we see in Revelations, right, that's talked about, right? That's why Jesus also said, right? You see these things happen, wars, rumors of wars, but know that the end is not near, meaning the complete, total destruction of everything. But we are in the end time. Best, um, best believe, <laughs> right? Yes, we are in the end times. I'm going to go, I'm going to New York on y'all for a little bit. But yes, that, that is true. But it's not to be afraid because we have power and control that the Lord has given us. To overcome the darkness right so God's saying remember this because it's the enemy's time that's coming right he's on a short leash he's on a short leash his time is coming to an end as well because he sees he knows that you're growing stronger and you're leaning closer to our father in love and in obedience in faith and in your worship okay so time has come to time has come the lord's saying that time has come to be your greatest asset if you endure right this is what the lord always talked about a lot if you read throughout scripture all oh, god talked a lot about endurance right uh, and that's what he asks of us most because if we can endure till the end take hold of self-control and long suffering which yes a lot of you have suffered long you know i've done the same i'm still long suffering is a part of this journey but it doesn't mean we're gonna sit in that we are you know but this is what produces the fruit of the spirit inside you that purging and purification process but he's saying take hold of those things and that time will always defeat the enemy in our lives because our father has set a course our father has set a course that has already given us the victory our father has already set a course that has already won the victory that has already given us the victory okay so he's saying let time let time be your greatest asset and not your defeat let time be your greatest asset and not your defeat remember that there is a set time for everything there is a set time for everything and with that he wanted me to read ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3 verse 1 to 8 ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to 8
and a lot of you, you know, you've read this, you know this, this is about that, that there is a time for everything, right? There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And we know that that doesn't mean that, you know, when we see the, those negative things, it's just... A description of that this is the reality that there is a time where these things will happen that there are people who will enact the war the killing the hatred unfortunately and there's a time where people who will rise up that will enact the peace and the love of God that these things the simultaneous na of nature of creation right in Genesis 1 the world was created out of chaos right it wasn't formed yet it was an unformed, you know, surface. It was unformed. And God breathed, right? The, the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters, right? He's the one that constructs all things. There's a set time for all things. And so he's just saying, take hold of that. Do not let time be your defeat. Let it be an asset. And to be calm to be why and, and really why ecclesiastes 3 is you know like the sons of issachar they knew the times and the seasons and they knew right they knew prophets i i have that anointing as other prophecy too like to know the times and the seasons and you can have that ability you do have that ability too it's just simply a matter of tapping into the lord because the father is the one that tells us that and he will tell his daughter he will tell his son you tap into the spirit in the secret place and he will tell you all things right he doesn't withhold from you when you build your relationship with him and then it's more than that when you come to a place where you can receive more and more because some things are too heavy for the human spirit to hold it has to be more indwelled with the holy spirit to receive it because it might make you go a bit you know off the hinges but he is the one to give it to you it's not you know how smart you are or how whatever you know how anointed it which the anointing is the holy spirit but that comes with you spending time with the lord with the father okay so he's just saying that there's a set time for everything and that time can be your greatest asset so let that be the case with you and of course this is a great time i've said it on the last word to spend more time with the father spend more time with the father in the ending the beginning of the the hebrew new year and as we enter into the uh, beginning of the greco calendar 2020 new year okay guys love you all be blessed hope you're doing well stay close to the father stay in worship and you know obviously in prayer and in your word and i'll see you on the next broadcast Shalom.